Hello, and welcome to Set in Stone History, the university project that aims to educate you on the history of statues and sculptures in the northeast of England. My name is Declan. Joining me for this one is Charlie. Hi, guys. And today we are going to be looking at the Angel of the North, located just outside of Gateshead. It is precisely located on the A1, just outside of Gateshead. And it was sculpted by Sir Anthony Gormley from the years 1994 to 1998. To begin with, we think it is crucial to get across how impressive the Angel of the North is in its physical form. The sculpture is of a featureless humanoid standing straight without arms. Instead, it has wings pointing out from its sides in a sort of T formation. The sculpture is a representation of an angel and stands at an impressive 66 feet tall, with the ings being 177 feet out and are also angled at 3.5 degrees, almost looking like it's giving a hug. This impressive size makes the Angel of the North the largest angel statue in the world, which is quite the achievement given how important stories of angels have been to society. The angel itself is made from weathering steel and weighs 200 tons. I can't even fathom how heavy that is. I don't know if you do this, Charlie, but when I stand under something so large, I always have that little tiny thought in my mind that asks, well, what if it falls on you from the strong winds? But rest assured, that won't happen with the angel, which can withstand 100 miles per hour winds. You don't need to worry, Dick, because it's structured so it has vertical ribs that act as a skeleton. This helps break up the wind on the wings and moves the force down the body onto 150 tonnes worth of concrete foundation. The total foundation it has weighs 500 tonnes. That makes me feel a little bit safer, but I still don't want to take the gamble, to be honest. <laughs> Funding for the Angel came from a variety of sources, totalling at £800,000. The sources include the Arts Council Lottery Fund, which gave £584,000, the European Regional Development Fund, which gave £150,000, and the Northern Arts, which gave £45,000, alongside additional finances and help from industry. That is quite pricey. Did you know, a fun fact about the angel is that it was sculpted around Sir Anthony Gormley's body without arms. It must have been horrible standing there in that pose with his arms out, getting all the plaster around him. It would have been freezing. Literally, I can't imagine how bad it would be. Next, we need to discuss why it was built and what it represents. And speaking of Sir Anthony Gormley, I see no better person to explain it than himself, who I will now quote. People are always asking, why an angel? The only response I can give is that no one has ever seen one, and we need to keep imagining them. The angel has three functions. Firstly, a historic one to remind us that below this site, coal miners worked in the dark for 200 years. Secondly, to grasp hold of the future, expressing our transition from the industrial to the information age. And lastly, to be a focus of our hopes and fears. A sculpture is an evolving thing. I'm now going to talk about the mining industry so we can get a better understanding of the background of the angel. Mining was once an extremely important part of the North East. McGuinness and Nickel point out how, in 1913, at the industry's peak, the region's collieries were producing roughly a quarter of the UK's coal every year and were known across the world, end quote. That's quite impressive. Many towns such as Seaham Harbour, Bedlington and Ashington owed their existence to coal and mining was the focus for the whole community. Coal was once the lifeblood of industry and a key part of life in the northeast of England. However, the mining industry eventually came to an end as a result of Thatcher in 1984 announcing her plans to close 20 coal pits. After this, coupled with poor wo working conditions and bad pay, miners started to strike to cut down the British coal industry in an attempt to prevent colliery closures. However, despite this, Thatcher was victorious and hundreds of pits began to close, which was disastrous for the North East economy. It's amazing how something so simple looking can hold and represent such history, especially because at a glance, you'd never think of that. Not at all. Unfortunately though, like many things, the angel has its fair share of controversies, mostly occurring before it finally got put up, and most of which threatened to have the angel not be present or built at all. First of all, let's start with Sir Gormley, who originally didn't want to work on this project, stating that he doesn't want to make, and I quote, motorway art, end quote, which I think is kind of a low blow, but maybe that's just hindsight talking. I would have thought a sculpture that greets people into Gateshead would have been a project most would have jumped on. This hesitation could be blamed on a past failed venture of Sir Gormley's, this being the Brick Man of 1989 to 1990. 
The brick man was supposed to be present in Leeds at a large size, similar to the Angels, but over 2,000 people had demonstrated against the project for various reasons. Councillor Richard Hughes Rowland said it reminded him of, and I quote, King Kong, end quote, which I find very weird given that it was supposed to represent a man. He also added, and I quote, If Mr Gormley is talking about it going elsewhere, my eyes won't exactly be weeping tears, end quote, which again I think is pretty harsh, and I also think that the city of Leeds really missed out on something special. After Sir Gormley decided he would like to do the project, it wasn't as simple as getting to work. In 1994, the Council's Art in Public Places panel had to choose between two sculptors, the first being Sir Anthony Gormley, who at the time did not have a knighthood. The second would be, at the time, the better known and already knighted Sir Anthony Caro. However, in a stroke of either luck or misfortune, depending on who you are, only three of six council members had turned up to vote, with the score being settled two votes for Sir Gormley and one for Sir Caro. Among those missing was Jonathan Wallace, a Liberal Democrat and known critic of the project. It is likely his vote would have went against Gormley, which may have changed history had he had been there. With those two close calls out of the way, there was so much more that went wrong. It's a wonder the angel was ever sculpted. When Gormley's design was revealed, it gained a lot of negative reactions from critics. Some of the things stated are as follows. It would cause accidents on the A1. It would interfere with television reception. It would be an eyesore and spoil views, and it would attract lightning strikes and attempt vandals. The now uncontinued Gateshead Post once compared the angel to a similar looking German sculpture from the 1930s, with the headline being, Nazis, but nice? On top of this, the council's Liberal Democrat opposition started a campaign to stop the angel from being built via petition. People had thought the 800,000 price tag would be better spent on schools or hospitals, but Fortunately, the angel had survived all of that, and was finally erected in 1998. And while that marked the end of threats to the angel existing, it didn't exactly mark the end of the angel's controversies, did it, Charlie? No, it didn't, but people's attitudes towards the angel became more positive. For example, here are two controversies that showed positivity towards the angel. First of all, in 1998, some football fans had put an Alan Shearer football shirt on the Angel of the North and Sir Gormley supported this action. For example, he believed that more manly hobbies such as football and art were separate worlds, but this marked the start of these two cultures coming together. Sir Gormley states that in the locker rooms of the North East, it was okay to talk about art, end quote, and this shows how these two hobbies came together because of the angel. Another example is in 2018, ten pranksters, after multiple attempts, had managed to put a Santa hat on the angel, and the group aimed to bring joy to people in this action, and this shows how the angel can re- be responsible for creating happy and cheerful moments. Honestly, I think those last two controversies speak volumes on how the Angel of the North is widely received from the moment it was put up to now. It seems like everybody collectively forgot about everything they disliked about the Angel, and then fell in love. Literally. On the day the parts were being delivered to the site it now stands, people were encouraged to stay away but really didn't. According to Sir Gormley, and I quote, By midday we had 2,000 people there. End quote. I feel really bad for Gary Porter the driver of the 48-wheeler carrying the angel's body, I couldn't imagine the anxiety. He remembers the event by saying, and I quote, Every corner, every roundabout, every turn, hundreds, thousands, everywhere. End quote. The angel from that point forward has been nothing but an icon to both Gateshead and Newcastle, and beyond them, I'd argue, all of the North East. You would struggle to find many people who dislike the sculpture nowadays. But Charlie, I'd also like to hear from you, Do you think the Angel of the North is still relevant, and does it mean anything to you? For me personally, I think that the statue definitely still remains relevant today. When I think of Newcastle, the Angel of the North becomes a significant image in my mind, even though it is in Gateshead precisely. I think the location of the Angel helps it to remain relevant as well, because it is situated next to the A1, and it's seen by one person every second. That's around 90,000 people a day. Phenomenal. I believe the Angel of the North is definitely still relevant today and does remain a key part of North East culture. I'd agree with its relevance. I think it's impossible not to. It holds too much important history not to be. 
I think it's very important to remember the history of the place you live in. And for people in Newcastle and Gateshead, the recent memory of the mining industry will forever be captured within the Angel. For me personally, the Angel resonates with something that I enjoy doing, thinking about answers unknown. Sir Gormley wanted to depict an angel as we have no idea what one would look like, and I think he did an amazing job. The angel has no race, no gender, no features, and no clothes. You can impose whatever you wish onto it, which I think is extremely cool and can make it quite personal. Finally, for me, it also serves as a welcome home, as I always enter Newcastle through Gateshead via the A1, in which the angel always stands. So, that was the Angel of the North. We hope you enjoyed listening and learned something. Have you had any thoughts? Did we miss any facts that you would like to share? Please put them in the comments down below. If you're interested where we got our information from, please check out our bibliography. Thank you for listening and we hope you have a lovely day. Thank you for listening.